Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nigel. So my, my only complaint about your presentation is you didn't mention GPU enough times. I, I tried, Jeff. Yeah. I did. I did. I don't I get a hundred bucks every time I mention it. That's the um, there it is. There. So it's great to see it. So explain this to us uh, a little bit simpler. So you're you're translating speech to text and yep. then you're indexing, searching the text. Why why do we need you for that? Why can't we just use a speech to text converter, they're all over the place, and then have Google or someone else go search it. What are, I'm trying to figure out exactly yeah. what you're doing differently. Why can't I just put one and one together and get A couple, get couple of things there, Jeff, really. So you know, what is it that we do that's unique? Uh, the first thing is most of what we do is actually on-premise for people. So most of our clients, banks and so on, have security concerns. They can't send this stuff to Google. They can't send it to IBM Watson. They can't send it to Nuance. So we do massively high-speed processing locally or in the cloud. doesn't really matter very much to us. The second thing is the smart transcript is actually generating a complete replacement for the MP3 file. So that means that you, when you're on the phone to uh, our customer interactions guys who we were talking to earlier, after that call finishes, you get an email, and the email has got the smart transcript. You double-click. You can see what was said in that call, and it means you can index that. Imagine that you can actually leave that on your file system, type it into your local search, and bring that file back just using the text. No one else is doing this. What about languages? Like uh, many of these uh, nuanced type solutions support 30, 30, 40 languages. How are you going to do that? And how long is that going to take you? And how expensive? So as things currently stand, uh, we've got very good support for English, not unsurprisingly. Brazilian Portuguese, in the run-up to the Olympics, we've been doing a huge amount of work down uh, in Brazil. French is another one. Our head of research is French, so it's hardly surprising. Uh, we're also doing German and Spanish at the moment. Japanese is coming through. And yesterday, I picked up a new customer who wants Mandarin. It takes us about six weeks to build a new language, and we can do that in parallel. How about punctuation? Um, as you're capturing the language, one of the big problems has been for speech to text is punctuation, actually trying to capture what the person intends to say, not just the words they're saying. Yeah, punctuation's a nightmare. I mean, it is an absolute nightmare. And we started the traditional way, which is you listen in for pauses. But now what we're doing is we've actually built a machine learning algorithm which enables us to predict, character by character, what the, what the likely next thing is, whether it's a comma or a full stop, using the structure of language. So we're releasing that in the next couple of months to actually really upgrade our punctuation support. But, you know, GPUs, couldn't do it without them. <laughs> Did I mention GPUs? Sorry. It's, uh... GPUs. Uh, so to continually, I guess, refine and make your algorithms and your, your neural network yeah. more you know, intelligent, you need a lot of data. So yeah. what are you doing right now to collect that data, whether it's proprietary or not, to help then inform the ultimate product? So data comes in two types. We've got the, the raw audio data, and then we've got transcription. So we use a combination of pre-transcribed data, some of which we collect, some of which uh, is available for free on the web, even things like podcasts. Um, there are radio stations which allow people to use huge amounts of this stuff, but also unsupervised now as well. So the ability to actually, the neural net is good enough now, you can feed it raw audio data and feed it from the output with what it's confident and send it back round again. So we're actually in a position now where the, the world is changing as far as the type of data we can use. Smaller amounts of data, larger amounts of learning. Quick last question. How many customers do you have for this? Uh, so we've got 30 customers worldwide at the moment, but most of those are reselling to other people. So each of those 30 may have 10 or 15 people on top. So we're very much a partner-driven OEM type of model. Nigel, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, everyone.